What is the best part about summer? Is it enjoying the outdoors while sitting on a boat? Is it eating an ice cold snow cone? Or is it just taking in the nice summer rays? While being outside during the summer is absolutely wonderful, we would argue the best part of summer is actually when you head back into a nice, cool, air-conditioned home. But in the not too distant past, not everyone had the ability to enjoy an air-conditioned home. So just when did air conditioning come around? The idea of cooling yourself off on a hot day is not a new concept. During ancient times, many wealthy people used man-powered fans and came up with other primitive ways to keep themselves cool. However, none of these methods were long withstanding, so let's fast forward until 1758. This is when great American inventor Benjamin Franklin made the discovery that when liquid evaporates from a surface, it creates a cooling effect. Franklin made this discovery alongside chemist John Hadley. This effect is still the basis of how modern air conditioners are running today. From here, we move right along to 1851, when John Gorey, a physician from Florida, created an ice machine that used compression to create ice. Air would then be blown over the ice's surface to create a cooling effect. Gorey created his machine in an attempt to cool patients so diseases could be prevented. The air conditioner may have taken off right then, but unfortunately his financial backer died, so he lost funding for his project. What could have been? Next, we find ourselves in 1881 and President Garfield had just been shot. In order to keep him comfortable, a device was created that blew air over a wet cloth. While the invention was able to lower the temperature in the room by 20 degrees, it could not save President Garfield, who died just two months later. Fast forward to 1902, Willis Carrier created the very first electrical air conditioner for the publishing company he worked for in an effort to control humidity to prevent paper from wrinkling. Carrier's air conditioner blew air over cold coils to cool the air temperature. He quickly realized the value of his machine and later went on to create Carrier Air Conditioning Company of America. Now we move on to 1914 when the term air conditioning becomes coined by Stuart W. Kramer. Kramer created a ventilating device that added moisture into the air in his textile mill and called it air conditioning, which Willis Carrier borrowed when he named his company. During the same year, air conditioning was added to a home for the very first time. It was installed at a mansion in Minneapolis belonging to Charles Gates. The unit was massive, coming in at 7 feet tall, 6 feet wide, and 20 feet long. Interestingly, there is actually a chance the unit was never used, because no one ever lived at the residence. By 1931, the first window unit was created by H.H. H. Schultz and J.Q. Sherman. They became commercially available just one year later, but came with an extreme price tag. They cost anywhere between ten dollars to $50,000, which adjusted for inflation would be between $120,000 to $600,000 today. Next, in 1939, Packard rolled out air conditioning in cars. However, in order to use the vehicle's air conditioner, its engine needed to be stopped and the owner had to disconnect a compressor belt once they had cooled down. Stated simply, air conditioning means the creating of artificial climatic conditions in a building. It includes heating, cooling, ventilation, purification, and humidity control. It is a field that is growing and which offers many opportunities for employment. In 1953, due to the post-war economic boom, over one million units were sold to homeowners, and by 1965, 10% of homes had air conditioners in them. Visit the store with a blue and white sign, Air Conditioned by Westinghouse. Here you're sure to be comfortable. Sure, because it's Westinghouse. Say, this is even better than the beach. No sand in your eyes, no scorching sun. And Westinghouse air conditioning removes humidity, too. Circulates cool and dry fresh air throughout the store. In the 1970s, Central Air came around and helped to cool homes much more efficiently by utilizing condensers, coils, fans, and ductwork. I cannot live another day without air conditioning. Says tomorrow's gonna be hotter. Hotter? Like yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday you said you'd call Sears. I'll call today. You call now. I'll call now. 
Now's the time to save on Sears installed central air conditioning. Get 0% finance charge, no billing, and no payments until August with the Sears Charge Home Improvement Plan. So what's the paper say about tomorrow? Another scorcher. Cool. Finally, by 2015, the Energy Information Administration reported that 87% of U.S. households are using air conditioners. While it is impossible to predict what the future of air conditioning will hold, units are continuing to use safer coolants and are becoming increasingly more energy efficient. For now, it's just nice to know that when you walk inside after a hot summer day, you can guarantee that your home will be nice and cool.